more than 15,000 members, our alumni family carries the spirit of West Virginia Wesleyan College throughout the world. Today, we salute our alumni, friends, and especially the founders of West Virginia Wesleyan College. I am the orange line. My beginning was long ago. I have no end. I am perpetual. My source is in the West Virginia Hills. My reach embraces the world. I am in America's small towns. I am in her great cities. I cross the seas. I grow. I am your warm, enduring memories. I am your shared experiences. I am your friends your teachers. I am your link to the past. I am your dreams for the future. Wherever you are, there too am I. I am you. You are me. We are the orange line. And now I'd like to introduce Caitlin Ware, our spiritual life coordinator, who will give the invitation. Today, we celebrate 130 years of dreams, achievements, and leadership at West Virginia Wesleyan College. And today, we celebrate 130 years of an orange line that has wrapped across the globe in our ever-expanding Wesleyan community. Today, we ask for God's continued intervention in the minds of our communities to spark new conversation and ideas to better our campus, region, and world. Holy Spirit, 130 years ago, you gave inspiration determination to a group of Methodists to provide an education and new perspective to the people of West Virginia. You opened doors and gave them strength to carry this idea through into a hope that would outlast their time. Thank you for 130 years of learning and leadership opportunities, for 130 years of resilience and determination through difficult times, and for the amazing loving community that has brought us to call this place our home among the hills. We ask for blessings over this celebration, and most importantly, we thank you for our wonderful home. In your holy name, amen. I would like to introduce Caroline Rapking, our new chair of the Board of Trustees. Thank you, Caitlin, for your introduction and your participation in today's virtual Founders Day. Today is a very special day for West Virginia Wesleyan College. It marks the 130th commemoration of our founding. I welcome you to this, the first virtual celebration of Founders Day, and I thank you for sharing in the hopes, our pride, and our joy for our college, particularly during this unique time in our history. This is my first Founders Day as chair of the Board of Trustees. I had looked forward to delivering these remarks standing Wesley Chapel, but I find myself sitting in my office at my home in Northern Virginia. I know many of you, as I do, wish that we were in Wesley Chapel instead, celebrating Founders Day at our home among the hills. However, I know we all look forward to that time and the great celebration that we will have when we can all gather together again in person. One of the privileges I have today is the opportunity to introduce and induct new members of the Board of Trustees, albeit virtually. This year, we have two trustees who are joining the board. First, Kim Bjorgathorn, Associate Professor of Biology, joined the Wesleyan faculty in 2006. She holds a Bachelor of Science from the University of Florida, a Master of Science from Clemson University, and a PhD from West Virginia University. Kim's professional experiences include working with the Ecological Society of America, where she was a member of the Committee on Diversity and Education and chair of the Education Section. She was appointed to serve on the ESA Four Dimensions of Ecology Education Subcommittee in 2019. Her research interests are related to spatial ecology, and she has conducted research in West Virginia, Belize, and Peru. Dr. Bjorgathorn is an American Society for Microbiology biology scholar, and a Salzburg Global Fellow. She is chair of the faculty. Next, we have Nancy Wheeler, 
Nancy has served as the head volleyball coach at Wesleyan since 2017. She is a graduate of California University of Pennsylvania. Prior to arriving at Wesleyan, she had a highly successful tenure as volleyball coach at Penn State Fayette, where she led the school to over 300 wins and eight Penn State University Athletic Conference Championships and eight United States Collegiate Athletic Association National Tournament berths. She was named Conference Coach of the Year eight times. Coach Wheeler is currently the Chair of Staff Council, an advisor to the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, and the staff representative for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Kim and Nancy, we ask you to affirm your acceptance of trusteeship by responding, I will, to the following questions. Please raise your right hand. Will you accept membership on the Board of Trustees of West Virginia Wesleyan College, and will you endeavor to discharge the duties of a trustee to the best of your ability? I will. I will. Will you attend the meetings of the board when it is possible for you to do so? I will. I will. Will you give of your time, your substance, and your prayers for the promotion of the college? I will. I will. I now ask you to sign your name in the official register of the members of the Board of Trustees. Congratulations, Kim and Nancy, and welcome to the Board of Trustees of West Virginia Wesleyan College. I would now like to introduce Dr. James Moore to present the award for exemplary teaching. Thank you, Caroline. This year's recipient of the award for exemplary teaching is one of the most thoughtful, kind, and caring faculty members that has ever graced its halls at West Virginia Wesleyan College. This professor is described by students as being challenging while also being extremely nurturing, and that's no small feat. She has a singular ability to encourage students to question what they know, while at the same time helping them to affirm their own beliefs. Her creative and scholarly output is impressive, and like all Wesleyan faculty members, her excellence in this area enriches the lives of her students and colleagues. She is among the most gifted writers that I have ever had the pleasure to read, and it's not uncommon for me to sweat a little extra hard when I know I have to send even a simple email to her because of the respect and reverence that I personally hold her ability to articulate her thoughts and ideas. She provides students and colleagues alike with a safe space to be heard and at times to be comforted. I personally plop down on the couch in her office I don't know how many times, to vent or to seek counsel on a myriad of things. And I know that many students have had the same experience. I think I can speak for many among the faculty when I say that if this faculty member is in agreement with you, you know that you're on the right side of the issue. In the campus community's work through general education revisions over the last 18 months, there were lots of exciting and fun discussions. And there were a lot of vociferous discussions. This faculty member always seemed to know just what to say at just the right moment if any of us needed to be reminded why we were doing the work that we were doing. This colleague never seeks to be the compass of the faculty, but she often finds herself in that position when others turn to her 
because of the extremely high esteem in which she is held by all who know her. Among her most recent accomplishments is the founding of the Center for Restorative Justice. This initiative has the potential to change the face of this college for the better for generations to come. Would you all please join me in congratulating the recipient of this year's award for exemplary teaching, Dr. Deborah Dean. And now, Tara Steed, President of the Alumni Council, will present the Alumni Awards. Thank you, Dr. Moore. The Alumni Council of West Virginia Wesleyan College has a tradition of honoring individuals for professional achievement and outstanding service to Wesleyan and society. I am pleased to recognize these individuals for their exceptional leadership and commitment. The first award is the West Virginia Wesleyan Service Award which recognizes alumni who have rendered outstanding service to Wesleyan through recruiting students, working with the college on special projects, by serving as a consultant, arranging internships, representing the college at special events, working with alumni chapters, assisting the college in fundraising, or significant contributions to the welfare and development of the college and its students. This year's recipient is an alumna who has gone beyond beyond and above for Wesleyan students for nearly 40 years. Alice Andrews Lee Priestman, class of 1988. Alice began her career as an office manager in the Office of Admissions and held many positions of ever increasing responsibility. She especially enjoyed her tenure as the Director of International Studies Program from 1984 to 2001 along with the director of the Advising and Career Center role. Not only did the international students benefit from having a mother figure and mentor away from home, the annual international student banquets were legendary for offering a taste of the world to the campus and local community. Alice served as registrar and director of academic services from 2001 to 2018 where she and her staff helped every Wesleyan student chart their academic path from the first day at Wesleyan to graduation. Her great joy in this role was watching so many enjoy great success after departing from Wesleyan. Alice was honored throughout her career at Wesleyan. In 2002, she was named Outstanding Staff Member, and in 2017, she received the Buchanan Ambassador Award. Alice currently serves as student success coach at Mount St. Mary's University in Emmitsburg, Maryland, where she and her husband, Dr. Boyd Priestman, reside. It is my privilege to recognize Alice Priestman as the 2020 West Virginia Wesleyan College Alumni Service Award winner. The next award is the Young Alumni Achievement Award, which recognizes young alumni graduates within the last 15 years who have achieved status and position in their profession or who have demonstrated exceptional leadership in altruistic, philanthropic, or other service endeavor to their community, state, or region. This year's recipient is Brian Allman, class of 2007, who has been recognized nationally for being an incredibly gifted educator. Brian is a sixth grade social studies teacher at Buchanan Upshur Middle School. Last fall, he was named the Milken Education Award winner from West Virginia. Nicknamed the Oscar of Teaching, it is one of the most prestigious awards in the field of education. It is awarded to up to 40 teachers across the United States each year and comes with an unrestricted $25,000 cash prize. There are over 20,000 teachers in the state of West Virginia, and Brian was the only teacher in West Virginia to win this award. In addition to the Milken Educator Award, Brian was recently selected by the West Virginia State Journal and West Virginia News as one of the recipients of the Generation Next 40 Under 40 Award for 2020. This 40-member class is made up of the best and brightest young individuals that our state has to offer across all industries. He was chosen also as one of the 150 teachers in West Virginia to attend the Elevating and Celebrating Effective Teaching and Teacher convening in Charleston 
though the conference had to be postponed due to the coronavirus crisis. In 2013, Brian was selected as the Buchanan Upshur Middle School Teacher of the Year, and in 2014, received an Outstanding Teacher Award sponsored by the Buchanan Upshur Middle School Student Council and in partnership with the local Horace Mann Insurance Agency. Brian received his Master's in Educational Leadership from Marshall University. In addition to his teaching certification, he also holds Principal, Supervisor of General Instruction, and Superintendent certifications in the state of West Virginia. It is my distinct pleasure to honor Brian Allman as the 2020 Young Alumni Achievement Award recipient. The third award honors Sam Fiola, class of 1967, as the West Virginia Wesleyan Achievement Award winner. The Alumni Achievement Award recognizes alumni who have achieved status and position in their profession or who have demonstrated exceptional leadership in altruistic, philanthropic, or service endeavors to their community, state, or nation. Sam is a retired program director with Raytheon Company and a Tier 1 certified program manager. From 2006 to 2012, Sam was the program director of Raytheon Polar Services supporting the National Science Foundation's U.S. Antarctic program. Polar Services provided operations, instruction, and facilities maintenance and science support at three stations and aboard two research vessels in Antarctica. Sam managed 400 full-time staff and over 2,000 seasonal contract employees each year, coordinating offices on four continents to manage the requirements of a 12-year contract valued at over $1.9 billion. During his tenure, the new South Pole Station was constructed at the end of a 10,000-mile-long logistics chain, within budget and on time, in the world's coldest, harshest, and most remote environment on Earth. Sam's previous program management experience included president of a joint American-Canadian company based in Ottawa, Canada, providing base construction, operations, and maintenance support to the Canadian Defense Forces, serving overseas in Bosnia and Afghanistan. He was also a business systems manager for Dish Network in Denver, Colorado, and served as director of logistics for the U.S. Antarctic Support Associates in Denver, where he played a key role in transitioning the Antarctic program from predominantly military support to civilian support. He was proposal manager in Orange, California, project site manager in Izmir in Istanbul, Turkey, and special project manager on a Department of Energy contract in Hawaii and the Marshall Islands. Sam received a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration from West Virginia Wesleyan College in 1967 and graduated from the Naval Aviation School Command as an officer receiving a designation as a, as a naval aviator. He spent 11 years on active duty, including a one-year tour as a combat helicopter pilot in Vietnam. For his 20 years of service in the Antarctic program, a geographic feature was designated as Mount Fiola in his honor, located near the McMurdo Station, Antarctica. It is truly a privilege to recognize Sam Fiola as the 2020 Alumni Achievement Award recipient. Today's last award is the Friends of Wesleyan Extra Mile Award, which recognizes any person, faculty, or staff, or friend of the college who is not an alum, who has been responsible for furthering the cause of West Virginia Wesleyan College through publicity, fundraising, recruiting students, or performing other services. This year's honorees are Dr. Rich and Dr. Ruth Caleb. Dr. Rich and Dr. Ruth Caleb were the anchors of Wesleyan's psychology department with more than 85 years of combined service. Rich joined the faculty in 1970 and was in time promoted to professor of psychology. He served as the department chair for, the, for at least three decades. 
While he retired two years ago, he still teaches part-time today. Ruth became a full-time faculty member in 1973 and retired in 2013. Rich and Ruth were not only distinguished teachers, they were also tremendous mentors and advocates for their students. Many Wesleyan psychology graduates have found career success in a wide variety of fields, and several were admitted to prestigious graduate programs. Their graduates are authors, educators, business leaders, counselors, entrepreneurs, medical professionals, and clergy members. Rich and Ruth exemplified Wesleyan's high challenge and high support approach to teaching. Both were actively engaged faculty members, serving on a number of professional faculty committees and numerous search committees. In addition to teaching and mentoring students, Rich and Ruth loved attending co-curricular events, such as performing arts programs and athletic events, particularly their favorite sport, basketball. Not only did both enjoy watching the Bobcats and Lady Bobcats in the Rockefeller Center, they also traveled around the state to cheer on our student athletes. We salute Dr. Rich Caleb and Dr. Ruth Caleb as the 2020 Friends of Wesleyan Extra Mile Award recipients. Congratulations again to our most deserving award winners. And now, it is my honor to introduce Dr. Joel Thierstein, the 19th president of West Virginia Wesleyan College. Thank you, Tara. Since my arrival, I've been talking about being in an era of profound change. With the onset of COVID-19, this era of change has accelerated. What was to come in 10 to 20 years is now coming in one to two years. Adaptation is no longer a choice. It has become a requirement for survival. Two years ago, I stood on this very platform and I said that the era of change is beginning its transition into the era of transformation. With the onset of COVID-19, the era of transformation is upon us. There are many examples of societal transformation, none more prominent than that of the entire education system of the United States of America, and for that matter, the rest of the world, from kindergarten to high school, to undergraduate education to graduate school, transforming last March from a face-to-face -face experience to an online enterprise in only a few weeks. Education is adapted and continues to adapt. People are learning in new and exciting ways. Teaching and learning strategies in colleges are being transformed to bring the full potential of digital learning into reality as quickly as possible. Hybrid techniques are being developed to more fully realize face-to-face, in-person pedagogical advantages while leveraging the ability of digital learning to maximize student engagement. And while the pedagogies of learning are being transformed, the values instilled in our students and our graduates are valued now more than ever. The critical thinking focus of the liberal arts education is more important now than ever before. It maximizes an individual's ability to harness the power of change. As we emerge from the COVID era, we invite you to engage. As we emerge from the COVID era, we invite you to be transformed. Students, engage the wisdom and experience from those who have gone before you. Alums, engage the passion and fresh perspective of youth from those who will follow. When you engage, you're inviting the opportunity to be transformed. And now I'd like to introduce to you our keynote speaker today, Jason Spiegel. Jason is an industry leader and a West Virginia Wesleyan alum who has adapted to change better than almost anybody I know. Jason is an entrepreneur, a technologist, and a business leader who founded his first company, an electronics repair service, while still in high school. At the invitation of a close friend, Jason visited and later enrolled in West Virginia Wesleyan College where he studied philosophy and business administration, graduating in 2000. Jason's drive and zeal for learning has not slowed since. He went on to earn a master's in business administration and executive management at Loyola, Maryland, and is currently completing a law degree through Syracuse University, all while running a busy technology company, raising four children with his wife, Monica, 
and serving as a volunteer for several organizations. Jason is the founding partner of Wyant Technologies, Inc., a technology services firm based in Central Maryland. Over the past decade and a half, Jason has led Wyant to become an industry leader in the design and deployment of enterprise communication systems, supporting Fortune 500 businesses, government, and military customers across the United States and around the world. Jason's passion for development and innovation is reflected in how he and his firm keep up with the rapid pace of change within the communications industry. Wyant continues to foster a culture of shared learning and constant improvement with a philosophy of continuous innovation where everyone is both teacher and student. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in virtually welcoming Jason Jason. Hello, and welcome to Founders Day 2020. I am truly humbled by the opportunity to speak with you and thankful for your choice to spend this time with me. With that in mind, I will try to be brief. I'm humbled because the truth is, this may be my first Founders Day ever, virtual or otherwise. I'll have to ask, why me? What have I done that qualifies me? Why have I been so graciously invited, welcomed, and designated just for today as a keynote? I have some ideas as to why. We'll see if we can make sense of it all together. I gamble that my experience in Buchanan was not unlike yours. Though I haven't participated very much in the ceremony of the college, I did spend a lot of time in the residence halls, in classrooms, and like you, walking new paths in the grass as facilities were paved behind me. Like many of you, I have a lot of memories of my time at Wesleyan. Before we get too far into that, let's talk about an agenda. We can check off a warm greeting and welcome. Next, I'd like to spend just a moment on discussion related to COVID and the time we're in now. I think that'll be important later. We'll invest a little bit of time remembering. I'll share aloud those things that are appropriate when dressed this way, and I'll trust that you can fill in your memories at home. I'll tie it all together in a clever way that you'll remark on with hashtags and mentions and other social media constructs that I choose not to understand. And then, if we have time at the end, I'll debut my solo rendition of Home Among the Hills. The hashtags will write themselves. I hope you'll agree that West Virginia Wesleyan is not one thing cast in stone some 130 years ago. West Virginia Wesleyan College is what we have made of it together, collectively, as students, as faculty, as administrative staff, and as alumni. As the president notes, we are in a time of change. Look no further than the forum we're in today. We are celebrating Founders Day in the isolation of our homes. But our time together today is short, so let's close there and move on to the indulgence of remembering. I solicited the help of some of my friends and classmates to prepare for today. I connected and reconnected with many to bathe in nostalgia, hoping that it would help me to know what to say. If I could, I'd, I'd relegate you all now to breakout rooms so that you could do the same. As a graduate of the class of 2000 and a little bit of 2001, I attended West Virginia Wesleyan mostly in the 90s. My classmates and I were greeted by IBM ThinkPad laptops when we arrived on campus. We collectively fueled the rise and the fall of America Online Instant Messenger and ICQ. We were the ground floor of Netflix, which we knew as a DVD shipping company, rather than the Netflix original series Tiger King company. Fortunately for me, friendships came quickly. I made my first friends in Fleming Hall during a Sunday night football game. The Patriots won. I'm not sure the Jets have since. I'd be getting a text now if I didn't tell you my oldest platonic friendship was formed in Holloway Hall. Due to that mention, I'll expect a text of acknowledgement every time this video is played. I am fortunate. Many of those same relationships are active and carry me today. While my wife Monica didn't attend Wesleyan, we did meet in my time there. She'll be excited to share that story if you find opportunity to connect with her. Studied business, philosophy, and some economics. I only managed to finish some of those degrees, but memories of my time in those classes permeate. I still actively struggle to find a way to work Keating's justified true belief lessons into conversation, and now, successfully today, into speeches. I worked as a student in the help desk and as an RA. I worked for a short time as a professional in residence life. I learned a ton, not the least of which was how to properly format an email subject. 
I owe a lot of my personal and professional life to my time at Wesleyan. So is this what I took away from Wesleyan, like relationships or friendships or business colleagues and business acumen? In part, yes, it is. I took away all of that and much, much more. My experience was difficult to quantify, and I can't imagine how they reproduce it. It wasn't like a drive through car wash where I paid for a service, passed through a neutral, and came out the other side with some predetermined finish. My experience was unique. It zigzagged. Oddly, this somehow leads me to oftentimes discount it. I bet if you had to think about it, yours was this way too. I believe that this is the promise of Wesleyan. It is a network of people coming together to provide opportunity for a unique and individual experience. That promise existed before me. It served me, though I didn't know it at the time. It endures today, and now it calls on me. That's all a mouthful. What I mean to say is that Wesleyan is you and me. The me side of that is as an alumni, hundreds of miles away. The you side may be the same. Or you may be faculty or staff or a current student. Or perhaps even someone who didn't finish their degree at Wesleyan. I have those relationships too, and they're a large part of my equation. That should earn me at least one more text. And so, I stand in my home now, well removed from my formal education at Wesleyan, pondering what role I can play. How can I give back? I can't promise to attend in person. It's not likely that I'll be at next year's Founders Day football game. All the same, the opportunity for Wesleyan, and for all of us, is now clear to me. We are the tradition of Wesleyan, near or far, in real life and online. We are each positioned to give uniquely to the community, just as it gave to us. Putting aside what we traditionally think is meant by support the college, what can we do besides going back at homecoming or writing a check? By all means, please, please, go back, write a check. Time and money remain useful tools to the college. Falling in front of me, though, is something different. Perhaps something more. Perhaps it is for you as well. I can speak here today, virtually, remotely. I can mentor. I can Zoom. I can Google Meet, WebEx, and even begrudgingly, I can Microsoft Teams. I can host or recommend an internship, provide advice, send an email, or continue to collaborate with my classmates all these years later. I can contribute talent even when I'm not physically there. I can be a part of the Wesleyan promise. I now see this era of challenge as an era of opportunity. I can do all of this without shaving, without driving through pawpaw, or debating whether this strip of road is quarter H or if quarter H is finished. Perhaps I've been selected to speak with you today not because I am more extraordinary than anyone, I believe I am not, but because I am representative of how extraordinary our experience was. When we contribute what we are, it can become extraordinary. And so I invite you. I welcome you. I will be delighted to share with you the honor of keynote. I am inviting you to engage, bring to the Wesleyan community your creativity, your special gifts. We are all a part of this community that delivers unique experiences to people whose lives are molded by their time there, whether they plan it that way ahead of time or not. You and I are the Wesleyan promise. If we put our heads together, Surely we can find the hashtag in there. In closing, I'd like to deviate just a bit from the agenda. Few have embodied this Wesleyan promise as completely as Bob Skinner. Bob has been a definitive and strong influence on me, personally, even in my time after graduation. He's most recently taught me the mantra of challenge and support. It's worth your time to track him down to discuss it. I know he'll make time for you. For these reasons, I'm pleased to share with you the creation of the Robert N. Skinner II Scholarship in honor of my good friend, Bob Skinner. Bob and his family have contributed to the college in ways that will positively impact the lives of all of us for years to come. And so, to Bob, and on behalf of us all, I say thank you. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your challenge and for your support. Your trust in our capability. And thank you for all the learning throughout the years. 
you all too might have a new reason to share your thanks with Bob. That diversion, and others before, have taken us over my allotted time. I'll have to save my rendition of Home Among the Hills for the next time we meet. Again, thanks to you all. I appreciate your choice to spend this time with me. There's a land of rolling mountains Where the sky is blue above And though I may roam I hurry home to the ground Thank you.